What's up guys, Aaron Productions here, and today I'm going to give you the basics of how a fire alarm system works. So as you can see today, we are not on the MS2 because I've kind of already shown how to do it on the MS2. But this panel is more advanced. We're using the EFSC to show how this works. So since this door didn't like to stay shut, I've tied a little piece of wire and I'll put it through the key. There we go. Now we can see the panel without the door closing. So let's start off with all our indications. We have alarm, trouble, supervisory, power, disable, um... Water flow, annunciator trouble, battery trouble, ground fault, and service detector. So then for our buttons, of course, we have the reset button, sil the silence button, signal silence and drill, walk test, and remote disconnect. Then we have all of our zone disable buttons and alarm trouble supervisory in each zone, and then um, knack fault and disable lights for um, NAC 1 and NAC 2. So for this panel, of course, panel silence, if the panel's beeping, let's say it had a trouble, which I'll simulate by taking the battery out. Oops, there, take a second. There we go. And now the panel will start beeping. And then once we put it back to normal, it'll stop or we can hit the panel silence button until we fix it. So the next button is the signal silence and drill button. Um, I'll do a drill really quick. And you have to hit reset to stop the drill. As you can see, the reset also does a lamp test of all the LEDs on this panel. But it will also silence um, silence the signals and it will keep the strobes going depending on if you have a um, two knack configuration or just uh, silence as soon as you hit the button. Okay, we get a reset trouble on this panel. Walk test button. Um, you choose what zones you want to do walk test in. I've been, I've never been able to do this successfully, so I'm um, I'm just sticking to regular pulsations. Walk test on regular panels, you just hold it down for a few seconds, and then it should be able to um, let you do a walk test. And I know on the MS2, if you hold down the si signal silence and walk test at the same time, it'll do a silent walk test. Some you may have to do in the programming. There goes the reset trouble. So let's say we disabled this zone. As you can see, it causes a trouble, a disabled trouble. Now we will silence the panel. As you can see, the lights are still flashing. Now we will undisable it. And as you see, the trouble goes away. You can do the same thing for each zone. I may have not hit all of them. Yeah, I didn't. See, everything is now disabled. Besides that, and um, now the panel basically won't do anything. So that would be nice if you're trying to test something, I guess. Let's un this 
disable everything. And as you see, the trouble goes away. So remote disconnect, if there is a dialer connected to this panel and you press that button, it will disconnect it. And yeah, that's basically the interface. Um, if trouble comes in, panel silence, tell your monitoring company if you were monitored. Supervisory, let's say that the um, water flow is open or something. You could set it for supervisory. You set it for supervisory in the programming. I know on the MS2 you use dip switches to set it. There's a little chart on the door. And it'll say, um, turn on dip switch one to do supervisory for zone one. And then that's how you do supervisory. It will basically just do the same thing, but instead of um, doing a fire alarm when it's um, tripped, it'll beep at the panel. So, um, troubles can also occur anywhere in the system if a wire is cut. Or if you don't have resistors, you have to have resistors on every zone and neck. And sometimes they have some other things that need it. I know on the MS-10UD they have remote sync, which has, um, which needs a resistor. It'll say remote sync fault on it. And then enunciator. If you have an enunciator on the system, I'm pretty sure this one's capable of it. Um, battery trouble, obviously, if you unplug the batteries, we already showed that. Ground fault, if there's wires touching each other anywhere in the system or if it's touching the metal cabinet, anything that has to do with ground, it'll show that. Service detector, if you have um, the detector that the system provide, like monitors for and it gives the signal back, then it'll tell you if the uh, detector is dirty and on which zone it is. Now if we open this up, here's our circuitry. They do have a chart on the door. Here's our trouble um, a relay, supervisory relay, and alarm relay. I'm using this to power the um, indicator light for the system since it's improper to have it on the neck. Also here we have our power in, which our power gets um, converted into this transformer. The 120 volt line comes in right there on this panel and then that transforms down to AC voltage actually. Um, 115 volts AC which means it probably goes through that transformer as well. Um, there's our piezo. Here's our NACs, NAC 1 and NAC 2 and here's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We know wire this as positive and negative and same thing as here. So basically, whenever the wires touch, it will cause um, the zone to go into alarm, and it will send the power out to the alarms. So basically, all it does is when it gets the signal saying that it's closed, contact, it will know that, and it will display an alarm in whichever zone, and then the it will trip these relays, and the relays will open. I mean, close, and then they'll send the power up to the alarm for sounding. Oops, I'm putting this on upside down. If you want to know how to wire a system, it's very simple. Just put hot and neutral and ground on the proper terminals. And yeah, let me show you the diagram on the door right here. So usually they'll have a full board diagram so that you know how to wire things up. As you can see here on the zone diagrams, they have a pull station, another pull station, and the ELL relay. And then um, NAX, same thing, horn strobe, and then the um, resistor at the end. So yeah, that's basically, basically the basics of how a fire alarm system works hope you guys enjoyed this little video because it was fun making and i hope uh, some people learned something today so that'll be it for this video guys peace out